All right, we are here today to talk about the state of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and we have some very, very special guests joining us to help us break down this conversation. We are joined today by both Michael and Tommy, representing the Stark Wars podcast. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Really glad to be here. I think Tommy and I have like con uh, contracted, uh, conflicting uh, opinions on a lot of different things, but we both realize there's a lot to be fixed in the MCU, so uh, happy to be here. Yeah, the, the tragic uh, way the MCU is going right now has really unified me and Michael. It's the one thing we probably could agree on most of the time. Absolutely. No, there's plenty to talk about for sure. They, they've definitely been on a rocky road, but we, we definitely want to examine this conversation from a few different angles to really dive into like what's going on with the MCU. Because I think it's been about three years now that people have been watching and sitting back and saying like, uh, this doesn't feel like the old Marvel that we were getting for such a long time. And, and so now, you know, we want to really dive in and focus on within this particular conversation, the multiverse and the choice to have these next three phases focus on this multiverse saga. And, and I think coming into this, we, we were sort of expecting this to be the route off of what we saw in Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. They obviously played with a lot of time travel and the quantum realm. So it felt like that they were going to multiverse stuff. And we know the, the, the history in the comics with Secret Wars. And then it, it became a reality. And so, you know, I just kind of want to, you know, start and get a temperature check from everybody. Like, if you just had to distill it down in like, I don't know, five, six words. What are your feelings towards the MCU as a whole right now? And let's start with our guest, Tommy. I want to start with you. If you just had to pick like a quick statement on your feelings towards the MCU, what would it be? I hate it. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I feel like they went down a path I would not have chosen. Mm, okay, okay. I was going to ask you to explain that. So I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. Um, Tommy, what about you? Or so, sorry, Michael, what about you? Yeah. Um, listen, I feel like for the most part, I found myself defending uh, this most recent phase a lot because there was a lot of things that I was liking and a lot of it had to do with the multiverse stuff. You know, No Way Home. I liked Multiverse of Madness. Like a lot of this stuff kind of worked for me. Um, I think where we really get into trouble is when it all starts to come together because the the story we're getting from one movie doesn't necessarily translate to the story we're getting in another TV show. So I think that's where my biggest issue comes from. For sure, Des. Um, I know we've talked about this a ton, but if you had to distill it down into just like a quick sentence about your feelings, what what would they be? Um, uh, man, it's 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 hard to say. Ball of confusion <laughs> is a is I think is a good sentence. Um, but also, uh, uh, you know, the journey's not over. I think is another sentence I'll throw out there. The journey is not over. So those are my two sentences. So let, let's talk about the multiverse as, as a choice, as, as a device that they have decided to really implement most of these um, most of these films and TV shows. Obviously, things have exploded with just the amount of new programming that we get. They have a ton of TV shows, a ton of movies that come out each year. But the multiverse is supposed to be the overarching story beat, you know, similar to the Infinity Stones. Right. But I, I think that it, it's presented a lot of challenges because there are a couple of things that you have to take into account. The fact that you are introducing parallel universes and, you know, in, in doing so, you might run the risk of introducing characters that the audience might not care about because these are versions that we haven't spent time with or just the nature that because there are so many multiverse stories, things might feel somewhat convoluted. So so how do you feel about the multiverse as like the actual device to get us from project to project? Michael, let's start with you. Yeah, uh, to be honest, when I when there were like, you know, those those rumors coming out that the, this is where we were going, I was very upset. Like I because I think my issue with the multiverse is it opens the door to infinite possibilities. And I feel like that's the thing that I, I don't want. I, I want rules. I want structure. I want to know what's going to happen. And I want to be able to make accurate predictions. And I don't want, you know, I don't want Tony Stark to die. And then it all just be taken away when he gets brought back through the multiverse. You know, there were things like that that really concerned me. I think they did they did ease some of my concerns with things like uh, no way home and, and they're doing a good job of like, you know, bringing back some of these older characters that we grew up on. So uh, I I'm really conflicted on it. Like generally, like if, if I was in charge of a franchise, any franchise, you know, fast and furious, no multiverse guys. Okay. No fast, fast and furious multiverse. Um, I feel like that's my general stance, but I honestly, I don't think they've done a horrible job when it comes to the individual stories that they're telling around it. Tommy, do you think that by introducing the multiverse, you are 
potentially alienating some fans just because it is like such a wacky concept from from comics. I mean, it's been utilized a lot, but you also again, I think with with audiences, you might you might strain their patience when you constantly introduce or reintroduce variants and, 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 and other parallel characters that, oh, that's the same actor, but this is not the same. I, it, it gets really, I think, convoluted. Do you think that they run the risk really of like pushing some of the audience out because it can get confusing? Yeah, I, I think definitely. I think you run the risk of pushing people out. I also think you completely close the door on new people coming in. Uh, Endgame was such an end of an era. And uh, you lose a lot of your main cast. You lose a lot of your characters. And now you're introducing this multiverse while you're also trying to get people to uh, believe in this new cast, believe in this new foundation. And and you're not, you can't, you're juggling too many balls now. You're both juggling this crazy idea of the multiverse, a bunch of stuff there, while you also don't have S.H.I.E.L.D., you don't have the, the core Avengers, you don't have any of the things that kept us grounded when we looked at the original Endgame series. And so, yeah, I, I think it does like alienate people. I think it does make people feel like, well, I have my MCU. The you know, up to Iron Man to Endgame, uh, that is my MCU. This new stuff, I'll watch if it interests me, but I, I'm not gonna watch at movie to movie, TV show to TV show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, that 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 I guess churn is is for lack of a better mm -hmm. term, is, is become like a real thing to where I don't know, just like my desire to want to keep up with everything is just lessening with every success of, you know, sort of project because we are getting so much like I'm still going to watch. But I think to the casual fan, what's the likelihood that they're going to watch every single thing? It's it's not high. You know, they already weren't doing that with 23 movies, you know, before all of this stuff. And now you're adding on TV shows. It just becomes a lot for any person. Um, Dez, do you think that like these other universes even matter because I remember like watching Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness and we go to, what was it? Earth eight, three, eight. I think that that was like the other, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't six, one, six. It was the, the yeah, it was eight universe. Three, eight sounds about right. Yeah. Something like that. I, I mean, we get there and the characters get disposed of super quick. Like we, we see Reed Richards and he's, I mean, he's gone. Like John Krasinski <laughs> showed up for, for, for 12 hours, you know? Yeah. So, I, I don't know if that's the right method to use if you want to get people to like really buy into this idea or this concept, or maybe that's just not the point. Maybe we're looking at it wrong, but how do you feel about that? Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think there are ways, I think if everything else was going in a different path, we wouldn't have cared about that throwaway universe that they created. Does that make sense? But because everything else is going the way it's going, we looked at earth 838, but again, that, that, that Reed Richards and all of them was like, Okay, but what exactly are we doing here? Is this a is is this what it's always going to feel like in the multiverse? Are we using the multiverse just for cameos and for people to be killed off, or what are we doing uh, with this? But I, again, I have a feeling that if we had up in, before that have established some rules in terms of like, no, this universe matters, and this is what's happening in that universe, then we would have felt different about that throwaway universe. You know what I'm saying? And so, unfortunately, that didn't happen, and so that's exactly how it feels. I think. At the moment, it is there's still time, I think, to change that. But for right now, it just is what it is. Tommy, Michael, you guys got any thoughts on that? Whether or not these other universes are even important to the to the larger story? I I hate that. Like, uh, I I think another big issue that I have with the uh, modern MCU is like their inability to like have any stakes as far as like actually killing people. Um, and like you said, we'll go to another universe and kill the entire like their Avengers, right? Um, but but we don't have like the same stakes in our universe. Like I, I felt like they're they're held held to a different standard. So, um. I guess it like again for them, it's like the multiverse is a way to do things that they feel like they can't do within their own universe. And I would test them to have a little bit more gumption to do some cool stuff like that in uh, 616. Yeah. And, and to echo off that, it's kind of the MCU kind of feels like what the comics have become, which is we're going to, it's quantity over quality, which is we're going to throw a lot of the things you love, a lot of these cameos, a lot of these cool multiverse. But we're not focused in on uh, how this is tying into a, a larger story. How like they throw things at you and they're like, all right, here's this cool thing. But it, it could they could tie it a little bit more neatly. I think uh, the Star Wars universe is actually a great example of right now. You know, they've had their hiccups, but right now they're starting to focus on the individual stories first telling a concrete story that is sprinkling in stuff, but there is like this trajectory that, that it's going towards and, and not just like, 
showing for the sake of showing. It feels like they're, it, 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 like I said, the comics a little bit do that a lot, which is fine when it's a comic book. But I, and movies are a lot more money than comics are to make every every day. Oh yeah, that, just ask Bob Iger. He 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 certainly talked all about the money and how much they cost. I mean, you know, we, he should probably just go to take 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 a take a silence, you know, sort of retreat for for a bit here because you um yeah, I think I think that that's definitely something we we continue to see as a problem. But one thing that's really really bothered me, and and I haven't brought it up that much, but every time I think about it, it's like okay, they need to really address this. To go back to what Michael said at the top about just the infinite possibilities, you can literally do anything. There are no rules. Well, now we have seen with this multiverse that they have sort of found and shoehorned a way to bring back characters that we never really knew whether or not they were connected to the MCU. For example, Daredevil or Kingpin or any of those Marvel Netflix shows. And now some of them are back, but some of them aren't. We don't know if like those shows actually are in the MCU or if they aren't. It's just like left in the air and they mm-hmm. refuse to address it for whatever reason. Like, I don't know oh, why. I, it must be and maybe they haven't figured it out but that that's how do you feel about that that you know we continue to watch these things we're excited about daredevil of course like charlie mm-hmm. cox showing up in no way home thunderous applause from 50 people maybe not the entire auditorium but for those who watch like we knew we, we knew about <laughs> him but um you know they they don't they don't actively tell us whether or not this is the same character or a different character or if it's like all meant to fold into this multiverse story that they're trying to tell maybe it's a variant how do you feel about just that 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 ambiguity that exists around a lot of these a lot of these characters especially when you talk about some of those more you know older established legacy characters yeah it's weird unfortunately it feels like because they because the mcu decides to do that it's hard to to trust them in a lot of different ways right it's almost like they're trying to give us like a, a piece of something but they don't know if we're gonna like it or not so they like they wait to see our reaction to it before making a decision you know what i'm saying they're like mm, i don't know if they'll like this so let's just throw it in the air to see what happens and if they catch it then we'll decide and put rules around it when we figure out that 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 formula works but not until then will we do that and it's hard to trust that right because i i, I don't want to trust somebody who's just kind of winging it all the time though some I, i'm all for swinging making swings right swinging for the fences i think that's what makes you know things fun so make things good sometimes but when you don't know exactly what you have in your pocket or what you have uh, uh in your tooling you don't know what exactly what's going on it, it it can be hard to 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 trust you and that's what it feels like the mcu right now it's just kind of hard to trust any anybody here need clarity about agents of shield whether or not it connects whether or not it you know <laughs> it, it's actually a part of this whole thing like do we do we need those answers i i, I want to know I think we just need answers. We've heard 20 different ways of how the multiverse works. There's no, there's nothing like, there's no rules. And I think that's the problem is like, you know, Loki had one version of how the multiverse works. Endgame told us a different version of how it works. It, it, it I think that's the problem. And what Des was touching on is like, it, it feels like I'm floating out on space and I'm just, you know, there may be cool things, but I still don't really understand. I still can't tell you really how the multiverse works and why it matters and, and all that stuff. It's a fun ride, I guess. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, I hate to be that guy, but it, it very much is like uh, yeah, it's a theme park, right? It doesn't have to tie together perfectly. You know, I think it, who was it? Martin Scorsese who said that the Marvel movies are like theme parks. <laughs> he uh, prophesized. He got I, he got it right. I think. <laughs> I think he got it right. I mean, you know, because you, you might be in you might be in uh, you know I don't know I, I don't go to a lot of theme parks. You might be in a certain land and then you walk into a different land. And it's like oh this is kind of the same, but it really does. You know, it's just it's very disconnected and um, yeah, uh, it's a lot. Des, is that is that kind of the point? The fact that it's so fragmented that that sets us up for inevitably Secret Wars because Secret Wars was was fragmented. I mean, it's bringing all sorts of universes, all sorts of characters together, creating these incursions. It, is that kind of the point to just like spread it so far and so wide that it creates, you know, really? I mean, the, the we talk about Infinity War; it makes that look like. Uh, a, a walk at the park once you start to talk about all the characters possibly that could be in that movie. I, I think there are ways to convey that you want us to convey that it should be fragmented. Does that make sense? Like there are versus like, oh, this thing is connected over here. But this thing, you never know. You know, I don't know. I think there's ways to get us to buy into that idea. I just feel like they haven't done the groundwork to to get us to buy into that. 
to say, oh, this thing is 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 frag this this def- defragmented, and now we can uh, uh we can bet it's all, all going to come together in this way because it's like that. If it's like that, keep it like that. Make that the thing. Nothing is connected. Oh my God! All of a sudden, everything is connected. What just happened? Do that. That's a that's a bigger swing to me. That's a bigger uh, a story choice and story beat to me than mm, this thing over here. Yes, this thing over here. You w- gotta wait and see this thing over here. Maybe not so much. It's a again. That's th- the theme for me, man. Ball of confusion. It's just a little bit too much going on. Yeah, I th- I think the, the the one big point that I want to make, you know, again about multiverse two is that not only are they having challenges with it and, and it's not really resonating, I think to the degree that they thought, it, thought that they thought it would, but we are also seeing other examples work infinitely better elsewhere. When you look at original movies, like everything everywhere all at once, which is like a very contained story, very, very much, you know, focused on one family, or even you go over to the, the into the spider verse and across the spider verse movies, like the way that they implement and utilize multiverse there, that, that feels like, something that is 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 controllable it feels like it's understandable and digestible but you get here when you're talking about an entire universe and you have all these different characters that we're supposed to have connections with and it becomes really really complicated um just want to end off with a couple more questions especially for our guests here um tommy let's start with you i want to ask you what would you do to fix the mcu like if 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 you were if you were next to kevin feige and and he said you know what i need you to get this together man i need, I need you to really fix this for us and like steer us for the next five years and get us to the promised land. What, what would you do to fix MCU at this point? See, and, I, and I'm worried they might've missed the train. Cause I, I think secret war or secret invasion was their way. Uh, I think what they need to do right now is they need to go back to the basics. You, you exploded with Thanos, come back, ground us, give us back the, the terms of what's happening in the world. Give us the group, give us what's happening. And I think with secret uh, invasion, which would have worked is, it's we've done space now. Let's the the, the call is coming from inside the house. Like there's people we don't know who we can trust. This terrifying thing. It, it, you'll be able to create the governments that you want to create. The, the different uh, groups like Sword and all that stuff. Uh, come back to Earth, then go explore the multiverse. Go explore King after you've got us back down to reality and what we know and what we don't know in the MC world. That's what I would tell him right now. Is you've already missed that, but like get us back to knowing what we need to know don't go for the big swings yet hit a couple you know base one base runs uh whatever you know clearly don't know baseball but uh just just <laughs> a couple couple lobs <laughs> across the board and, and get that going then start increasing again and start to progress again you have to come back to the basics yeah more more grounded approach for sure i think i and i really thought that that was the route that they were going to go I, I felt like that they couldn't really go any bigger and and well, it proved us wrong for for sure with everything that they've done um it's it's, like been, how it's ex- been weird how exciting would it have been if like over movie over movie you start to see little hints of scrolls in the background like there's you know uh post credit scenes there's like someone uh that you spent the whole movie with turns into a scroll at the end it would have been terrifying and it would have kept that momentum going from movie to movie for sure. Michael, what about you? What would you do to, to fix the MCU and, and to and to sort of curve some of these woes that they've been dealing with over the past few years? Uh, so, so here's the thing. I, I think the MCU tries to have their cake and they eat it, too. Right. They, they want they want this interconnected, like massive story that spans across TV and movie. But they also want like the individual like Moon Knight season that's t- kind of disconnected. I don't, it's it's not working and it's not working for a lot of people. And that's the kind of thing I see a lot, especially covering these shows to week, week to week. People are like, why does this matter? Or or they'll say, well, why doesn't Thor just come save the day, right? Like it's it's constantly like that. So I actually think when Marvel works at its best is in these smaller movies, not necessarily like an Avengers film, but something like uh, like Multiverse of Madness, where you you're bringing together two different characters that can kind of like mold like the Doctor Strange universe and also like the WandaVision stuff. Like, I feel like the more they can cross and interweave these stories a little bit more, it will make people more invested. I mean, that's what they were always good at. Right. Like, look at things like Civil War. You know, I, I think I think we can get back to like not necessarily an Avengers movie, but like, let's see the whole universe. Right. Let's let's let, I guess I'm going the opposite approach. Let's 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 expand it out here a little bit. So, um yeah, I also just want to touch on again, you mentioned uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, I think that's the best way the multiverse has been handled in any movie, including everything, everywhere, all at once. It has rules to it. 
Um, it makes sense. And the way that plays out is like a twist. And I think that, you know, that's a whole nother podcast, but like, I'm preparing to call that one of my favorite trilogies of all time when the third one comes out, but we'll leave it at that. No, a thousand percent. I, I we all ready. <laughs> <laughs> we ready. So uh, they need to get the strike over so we can get to it, you know, and, and, get, and get that get that third film uh last big question what what movie or what project tv series excites you you know i guess to, to to lean more positive what's out there in the future that they have on the schedule that that you're actually looking forward to that you can't wait to see that you know despite the challenges despite some of the hiccups that they've had over the past couple of years you're actually looking forward to uh michael if you don't mind we, we can start with you absolutely yeah uh maybe this might be a controversial opinion i'm stoked for echo Okay, like I really love wow. that. Yes, I loved that okay. character in Hawkeye. Hawkeye is one of my favorite MCU shows, and I think that character had a big part to play in it. So, and I, I think what's great about this, and it goes back to kind of what I said, we're using Echo like a character we don't know super well, but we already have like the backstory a little bit. So we don't have to reiterate all that stuff. We can throw her right into the action. And also, she's serving as a purpose to do things with Kingpin and Deadpool or no, Daredevil, sorry. Um, so I, I feel like the more we can accomplish with one project, that's the kind of thing I'm looking to see. And I think Echo is going to tackle that really well. Are you, are you going to binge it or are you going to try to space it out since they're going to drop it all at the same time? Is, did it get pushed back? I don't even know. That's the thing with the MCU. I don't even know. Like last I heard, like I don't even know when that show is coming. So yeah, it, it's, it's barely a point to keep up because it's, it's almost guaranteed to get pushed back at this point. Like we're not going to get anything when they say we're going to get it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think it's, I think it's January now. I think that they okay. push it back to January. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'll take a Tommy, day off work. I'll take a day off okay work. yeah tell me what, what what are you what are you looking forward to the most over the next few years yeah I, uh listen <laughs> not much uh no no i am excited i i know i sound pessimistic but i think loki season two i'm i'm excited to see what they do with that uh but honestly it's the it's the one-offs that i've been the most peaked on i think the halloween special they did was amazing i think the what-ifs have been interesting i think these like shots of their shooting that aren't connected that are just like here to tell a good story are the stuff that i've been excited for and, and excited to see what they continue to do in that kind of line gotcha des what about you and, and don't say blade we, we 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 know we we definitely know blade but what else? everybody knows about blade <laughs> no um I, I have to echo what tommy said real quick about uh it just feels like in the beginning right where where the mc wasn't a thing i they were like let's just make a really good iron man movie and then we'll figure out everything else later. We just need to get back to that, whatever that means. And 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 and, and I think also to add to Tommy's earlier point about everything being grounded, us talking about that. Jordan has heard me say this many times, right? Where the where the MCU, or not even the MCU, but Marvel Comics in general, is about people stepping up into the level of gods. And DC is like God stepping down to the level of people, right? That's just how it works. Like Wonder Woman is a god, Superman's a god, Martian Manhunter can do all this crazy stuff. Spider-Man is this kid who is broke and be trying to, you know what I'm saying? Iron Man, sure he was rich, but he didn't know what he had. His life was in shambles. He had to figure it out. This, this, this and thus forth. And so I think there's two projects that they have a huge chance to bring that back in X-Men and Fantastic Four, man. Some of the most grounded stuff that you'll ever see. They got societal issues. We wanna you wanna go into space? Here are four people <laughs> who literally go into space let's let's go through the multiverse with Fantastic Four. Let's 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 explore them as characters and and figure out the multiverse through them and, and things like that, man. So I think those are just two big projects that the MCU desperately needs right now. And I think it's going to help them fix a lot of stuff if they can get to it faster rather than later. Amazing. Well, we definitely want to send out another huge thank you to Star Wars, Michael, Tommy. Really, really appreciate you guys coming on to help us celebrate the 200th episode of Two Black Nerds, but also talking about the MCU, of course, and everything we're looking forward to and also some of the things that we would fix. Uh, before we go, tell us, where can the people find you? What, what you got going on with Star Wars right now? Uh, we're on all the podcast apps and also things like Twitch and YouTube, basically any platform. I, I think we try to be everywhere. So uh, just look up Stark Warriors. You'll find us. I do like to give an extra plug, though. If you're not going to listen to the podcast, I understand. You got you got all these two black nerds podcasts to get through. Um, at least follow us on Instagram. Hit us up at Stark Wars Pod. I, I like to think that that's kind of like the hub of our community. But, uh, you know, we like to connect with people there, you know, do polls and fun stuff every once in a while. So hit us up on uh, Instagram. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys again. Really appreciate it. I uh, can't wait till trivia next year too. We're coming back. We, we, oh, we, yeah, we got to come okay. back, you know, again. So, so we'll definitely be hitting you up, but uh, yeah, thanks again, guys. Really appreciate it. All right.